How many of you can speak English? Oh, thank goodness. So I don't need to speak really quietly and slowly. Okay, that's good. I'd like to start with a small apology. And that is that um, we've been fishing, uh, wild fishing, for the last two days. And uh, we're rather tired because we've been bivvied up. And so I'm going to have to read notes. There's no way on this planet that I can um, remember all of the notes that I've written. So please excuse me if my head's down reading my notes. But then it's not all about me. And it's certainly not about my presentation skills. Um, but more about the ideas and the experiences that I hope I can bring to the table um, to help you drive and attract more pike angling tourists to Finland. That is the overriding objective. Now I'm not a qualified fish scientist, as you'll quickly realise, and I'm not a freshwater biologist. Just merely a regular guy who spent the last 45 years trying to catch the biggest pike that I can possibly catch. Now at this point you're supposed to knock the person next to you and say he doesn't look that old. Um, but obviously not. <laughs> During those 45 years or so, my homeland, the UK, has seen dramatic changes in the way we fish for pike, the way we protect our pike, and the way we develop those waters that are the home to our pike. And this is where I feel I am qualified to share our experiences and hopefully give you a few ideas for the development of pike fishing tourism in Finland. First of all, let me tell you that you have the most beautiful country. That's a given. And you have lots of huge, stunning pike waters. That's something that we don't have a great deal of in the UK. And you could be the envy of most of the pike fishing countries in Europe, without a shadow of a doubt. But, and it is a very big but, I'm afraid, unfortunately, your country does not have sufficient protection for your pike. And I know some of you in here fully understand that, because I've been fishing with you. We're all here today to work out how you guys can encourage more overseas pike anglers to Finland. So I thought we should start by understanding exactly what it is that pike anglers want. <laughs> For sure, they want to catch lots of pike. Especially if they've travelled overseas and spent a lot of money. They want to fish on stunning waters in beautiful surroundings. They want reasonable hospitality. They want decent digs, perhaps not a bivvy, but somewhere decent and warm to sleep. They want nice food. And they want reasonable prices. And they need fairly straightforward access to their chosen waters where they're going to fish. But most importantly, and I cannot overstress this point, they want to be in, in with the chance of catching a monster pike. That wasn't supposed to come up yet, sorry. First mistake. Now I don't care what anybody tells you, the driving force behind every pike angler and in particular those going to the trouble of travelling overseas, is to be in with the chance of catching a dream monster pike. That's what they want, ultimately. So what is a dream pike, you may ask? Well, I would suggest that for the, the, the regular pike angler, a 20 pound, which is 9 kilo, a 9 kilo pike is probably the first dream pike. We, we measure that as 20 pounds. That is our first threshold. But once a pike angler has caught a few of those, it very quickly moves on to a 30 pound pike. That is the dream pike that everybody wants to catch. 
which is what, 14 kilos, 14.2 kilos? Sorry, I think we need to change your microphone. Oh, is that another one? Yeah. <laughs> Just bear with me, sorry about that. Which one's not working, the camera? Uh, no, it's this uh, headset. <laughs> I'm shattered. Thank you. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Everybody hear me now? No. 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 Can you hear me now? No. I can shout. How's that? Yeah. Okay. So, 30 pound pike are, are pretty rare across the whole of the Northern Hemisphere. So, I would say that a 30 pound pike is probably the vast majority of pike anglers' dreams across the whole of the Northern Hemisphere. <coughs> Let me show you a few examples of some of these dream monster pike. That's pretty big. Oh, who's that ugly mutt? That's pretty big, huh? And that's pretty big. So there's a few examples of, of what I would call, and what most people call, monster pike. So now that we've established the kind of required weights of the desired fish, let's just go back to the four levels of requirement and see how, see how Finland fares. You do have waters with enough, dare I say, smaller pike, so that there's a good opportunity to catch plenty of pike. So you've got a big tick there, for sure. You certainly have the most beautiful waters and scenery. So that's another big tick for Finland. You have great hospitality. We've enjoyed great hospitality while we've been here. Um, I'm sure it could always be a bit cheaper, but hey. But you don't have as many monster pike in your waters that you should have. And this will be the single biggest reason why overseas pike anglers will choose the likes of Sweden, Holland or maybe Germany over Finland for searching for big pike. So in summary you get three big ticks but one huge great big <coughs> at the bottom. Now let me tell you that is a great start. Don't, don't, that is a great start. Um, but it leaves us, or you, with a great big issue, or maybe I should say opportunity, and that is to create the right environment with the right management that allows your pike to grow big. Simple. Hey? Simple. I'm afraid not. What you have in Finland here today is not too dissimilar to what we had going on in the UK some 40 to 50 years ago. This was a period in time when the pike was not popular. Many of the clubs, the associations that ran our lakes and rivers dictated that any pike caught should not go back into the water alive. And many ended up thrown up the bank um, and, and, and killed. Thank God at that particular time there weren't so many dedicated pike anglers. Um, and most anglers in those days enjoyed float fishing for roach and perch and bream etc. The rare pike anglers that were dedicated to the sport obviously ignored the rules and they were slipping their pike back. But many, many pike met their fate during this period. And with the exception of a few waters, big pike were very few and far between. So it has a huge, huge effect on the big pike populations. The problem that UK pay, uh, piking faced at this time was largely down to misconception. And this is where there was very little 
understanding of the pike's behaviour. And this ignorance led to a general consensus that pike swam around and around their lakes or up and down their rivers eating everything that moved. And the majority of clubs and associations firmly believed that the pike were emptying their waters of their small silverfish. Now let's just think about it for a few seconds. Northern pike, Stefan mentioned it earlier, northern pike have existed on this planet for around 200 million years, give or take a couple of years. Surely, surely if they were that prolific at emptying lakes and rivers for the length of time that they've existed, we wouldn't have any roach, perch, bream or any of the smaller species because they would have become extinct. We now know that pike can coexist with all of our native fish. And we now know that pike contribute to a healthy, balanced fishery. We also know that they eat their own. Stefan mentioned it earlier. So they're self-regulating in their numbers. But it took years and years to get this message across but thankfully, gaining a better understanding of pike over the years has helped us to change that misconception in the UK. It strikes me that here in Finland, where regular netting takes, places, takes place, and we saw it just the other night when we were fishing, people putting out apparently illegal nets on the river. And there's still an open policy to kill every pike. And clearly there is a big issue with misconception because people don't understand enough about the pike. So let's just put that aside for a minute or two because the pike has one other really real big problem 40 years ago in the UK. And this problem still exists today to an extent. And it's the fact that the, the pike looks bulletproof. It looks rock hard. It looks like the toughest creature in the river or the lake. And this causes um, big problems. Let's face it, it does look pretty tough, eh? And then it opens its mouth. This appearance and the tendency to thrash about both in the water and out of the water, makes people scared of the pike. Many regular float anglers and, and coarse fishing anglers are scared of them. And even some pike anglers are scared of them when they misbehave, because it's a real confidence thing when you're handling the fish. A mouthful of razor sharp teeth doesn't help there's nothing, there's nothing to help these fears and this poses a huge problem for the pike because nothing could actually be further from the truth. Because this apex predator is in actual fact one of the weakest fish that we have in our fresh waters. It's mega sensitive to water conditions. If you catch one in warm water where oxygen levels are low it will gas up, roll over, and in many cases die. If you keep it out of the water for too long, taking 25 photographs, it will sometimes struggle to swim away and it will potentially die. They're not like carp that can stay out of the water for a long time. And it doesn't take kindly to having damage to the gill rakers and will sometimes turn over and die. So the pike isn't as rock hard as everybody thinks. Excuse me for one second. So in an era of little knowledge, little expertise, and this word misconception, the pike stocks suffered badly in the, year, in, the, in the UK all those years ago. So why am I talking in depth about this misconception? 
Well, I suspect that there's still a misconception amongst the districts or, or the powers that be here in Finland, those who control your waters. And I would almost guarantee that their views, coupled with the fact that you're allowed to kill any pike, will be causing horrendous damage somewhere along the line. The districts, I'm not sure if that's the terminology, but I think it's the districts or the people who control the fishing should be the first people to rid of this misconception. And they should be made fully aware that the pike will complement their fisheries and not decimate them. Thankfully, things have improved dramatically back in the UK. And today we only have the odd isolated incident where pike are persecuted. And this is usually dealt with fairly quickly. That said, we do have one huge problem that in many ways is similar to what is going on here in Finland. And that is Southern Ireland, or air, as you may call it. Not quite sure what's happened to my uh, slides there, but we'll soon be back on air. Though Southern Ireland is not officially part of the UK, we do have a strong affinity with this stunning part of Ireland. Between 1983 and possibly 1996, mm. I think it's fair to say that Southern Ireland boasted the very best pike fishing in the world. They had it all. They had beautiful waters, big waters, very similar to Finland. And pike anglers flocked from the continent year after year after year to the likes of Loch Corrib and Loch Mask in pursuit of the giant pike. And they did hold big pike. Just lost my spot. Things were not to last, however. And in 1969, the authorities made the decision to protect the running brown trout that migrated through these huge locks and started seine netting the pike spawning grounds every spring. The results were devastating. And to this day, despite masses of pressure from pike anglers and organisations, they still continue to remove masses of pike. And guess what? The pike fishing continues to be poor. Very occasional big fish get through, but it is not a shadow of what it used to be um, those years ago. I wrote this speech last week, but I read on one of the forums last, as late as last night that there seems to be a little chink of light at the end of the tunnel because I was reading that the authorities in Southern Ireland now are starting to think about stopping the netting to do a trial. I gather it's a trial period to see if it affects the brown trout catches. So they may have broken through um, in the last couple of days which will be amazing news if they have. And maybe, just maybe, if they have, we can use that as a great example to show the people in Finland what can be done. Now, although Southern Ireland is, is a depressing story, we do have some fantastic examples of progression. The vast majority of commercial rainbow trout reservoirs used to kill every pike they could get their hands on in the UK. But slowly but surely, the fishery managers have become educated to the fact that the pike can be an, es an asset. Pike that eat trout will grow big and fat, as you can pro most of you will probably gather. And pike anglers will pay good money to catch big fat pike. So bingo! Pike are now allowed to thrive in these trout waters and they offer fisheries a new incremental income throughout the winter months when the trout fishermen have gone home and packed their rods away. We have one incredible example 
of such a water called Chew Valley Lake. Some of the fishermen in here may have heard of it which has been regarded as one of the best rainbow trout reservoirs in the UK for decades. Then around 20 years ago, 20, maybe 22, 23 years ago, pike mysteriously appeared in ever-increasing numbers. Rumour has it some naughty pike anglers have dropped a few in there and they've, they've grown, but I know nothing. I know nothing. Eventually, around 13, 14 years ago, Chew Valley Lake decided to open the water to winter pike fishermen. And from that day until now, Chew Valley Lake has become the best pike fishing water in UK history. Best pike water ever for big fish being caught. And the, the fishing is so good that the boat allocations could be sold many times over every winter. It is so difficult to get a boat on Chew Valley Lake these days. It is incredible. And it's rumoured to generate more than £100,000 in incremental revenue for Chew Valley Lake per year. And guess what? The trout fishing is just as good as ever. Now, the reason why the trout fishing is just as good as ever is because they generate the cash through the winter, they reinvest some of that to st put more stock in for the summer, and it's just a complete circle each year. They maximise their trout revenue, and they maximise their winter pike revenue, and they both live relatively happily together. So, it shows it can work. I'll show you some of the Chew Valley pike, just to whet your appetite. They are huge. I guess this is what the authorities that control the waters in Finland really need to understand that, that the commercial benefit of having big pike in your waters. I'm led to believe that here in Finland you're allowed to take a pike of any size from any water at any time. Is that, is that true? Is that the case? God, what the heck is that all about? I really don't get that. And why on earth would you want to kill a creature that is this big, that has existed, you know, for, for 200 million years? You know, they've existed in these waters for 200 million years, and you just want to kill them because they're huge, great big things. I can kind of get my head around smallish pike being taken for the table. I do understand that. Um, but have you, all, have you tried eating pike? I suppose you've all tried eating pike. Jeeps, I, it's not great to eat, in, in my opinion. There's so many bones, it's unbelievable to eat. So I, I, I find that hard to believe. I find it hard to believe that lots and lots of Finnish people are, are catching and killing pike for the table. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but it, it, it doesn't seem right. I'm afraid that in my mind this rule is an open invitation for the persecution of pike. And it's by those very people who have the misconception. In recent years in the UK, it's not all rosy overseas. In recent years, we've had a huge influx of Eastern European immigrants. As new Eastern Bloc countries um, join the European Union, we've had an influx of people moving to the UK. Now, many Eastern European people eat fish that they catch. Um, and we've seen an explosion of these people fishing, mainly illegally, and taking whatever they catch home for the family. I can tell you here and now that some of our waters have been almost emptied of fish. So we've seen first-hand experience of just what an impact taking fish for the table or, to, or killing them can have on waters because there's never as much in there as you think. 
We, it's got to such an extent in certain areas in the UK that the police are now involved. So the police are looking out for these guys. And we've even set up um, voluntary bailiffing schemes to try and catch and stop these people from taking the fish stocks. It can have a huge impact on a water. I also gather um, that there's a growing trend of catch and release for carp in this country, which is hardly surprising with the, popula the, the, the ever increasing popularity of carp fishing all around the world. And if you have a water with big carp in it, you're sitting on a gold mine. Carp anglers will travel the world to be in with the chance of catching a big carp. And pike anglers are exactly the same. There just aren't quite as many of them. The growth of catch and release carp fisheries, I would suggest, is great news for Finland. Because obviously pike can't eat big carp. So therefore, they're not seen as a threat to the carp fisheries and the owners of these carp waters. And once these owners are in catch and release mode, it often results in the whole fishery becoming catch and release. So it's actually good news. The more this can spread, the better the news for the pike fishing in these waters. We understand what it is that overseas pike anglers want from Finland. The chance of catching a big pike. We've established that big pike means 20 pounds or preferably 30 pound fish. Bigger the better. We've identified that misconception at district level or, or control level has to be tackled. This has just got to be tackled going forward. And I've strongly suggested that the rule allowing all pike to be killed most definitely needs to be changed if, if Finland really does want to become a premier destination for overseas anglers. Now there's one more very important final part to the jigsaw. Safe handling of your pike when, they, when you've caught them. As I mentioned earlier, northern pike have existed on our planet for somewhere in the region of 200 million years. Humans a mere 200,000 years, fraction of the amount of time. Dinosaurs roamed the earth for 165 million years and became extinct around about 15 million years ago. So our pike existed alongside the dinosaurs. They even outlived them, as we all know, obviously. They survived the dinosaurs. They even survived whatever wiped the dinosaurs out. And then, to cap it all off, they survived an ice age. So I think it's fair to say that they are pretty resilient creatures. But the sad thing is, today, today the pike probably faces its biggest threat to date. Man. But more specifically, pike anglers. Now that may sound a little dramatic, given they've had to fight off dinosaurs and, and ice ages and all that. <clears throat> but <clears throat> what they've lived through uh, but the, real, the, the reality is that pike do not like being caught. I mentioned earlier that they are extremely sensitive fish that become extremely vulnerable when they're caught. There's a famous old saying that goes, if you love your pike that much, don't fish for them. But it's not quite that simple. Because many of us anglers are addicted to catching big pike. It's our passion. And in many cases, it takes up half of our, half of our lives. So if we assume that we won't stop pike fishing, we should sure as hell make sure that we make the best of a bad job and take special care of our pike when we catch them. Thirty-five years ago, a small group of dedicated pike anglers 
formed an organisation called the Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain. Some of the anglers in here will have, have heard of this and know about it. Little did these guys know that at the time that this club would go on to change the face of pike fishing in the UK and, and to an extent across the world of pike fishing. <coughs> Let me read out their mission statement. The Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain will work to establish an environment in which pike are valued both as a sporting fish and necessary part of the management and ecology of fresh waters. Everything that the Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain does is based around that mission statement. And for me, that is exactly what Finland is missing in the jigsaw. It needs somebody to take a, gr a grip of this sport and to be able to gain, educate people that need educating, promoting pike to those that need promoting to, and coaching anglers and youngsters that need to be coached. And that is exactly what the Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain does and lives and breathes in the UK. I think it's fair to say that the PAC has done an unbelievable job on changing the way pike are viewed in the UK. And if this same job could be done in Finland, you would undoubtedly have some of the most amazing pike fishing anywhere on this planet in just a few years. I'd like to summarise some of the things that the PAC has done for pike fishing. And it, it'll give you a flavour of... Where they, where they do their work. I mentioned it earlier, the vast majority of trout waters that have previously persecuted pike now allow pike to coexist alongside their beloved trout. That, a lot of that work was done by the Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain. They would approach the fisheries, they would discuss it and they would set up trials initially, they would do some pike fishing and then they would realize what the potential was and they would realize what the potential income was so that's a big job that the pike anglers club has done over the last 35 years they promote the use of strong equipment strong rods strong line lines and strong rigs so that we're not breaking off when we're playing a pike and leaving hooks down their throat and killing them Sorry, I missed one out. Safe, safe equipment, safe rigs, strong wire, semi barbless hooks where they haven't got big barbs on them that rip the mouths and the throats out. Good bite indication. So as soon as the fish, the pike picks up the bait, we know straight away and we can react quickly before they can swallow the bait and the hooks are in their throat. So it's all good practice and it's good guidelines. Early striking, as soon as the indicator goes, we don't wait for five minutes to see the line peeling out. We get straight into them and again, it stops the pike from swallowing the bait and causing problems. Unhooking mats. I'm not sure how common unhooking mats are, but there's nothing worse for a pike than thrashing on the bottom of a boat or on the gravel and the hard rocky banks that you've got here in Finland. There is nothing worse than slashing their backs and sides and damaging them. So unhooking mats are all are compulsory on a lot of UK waters now for all different species of fish. Proper unhooking equipment. Big strong forceps. On this particular picture, I haven't got the, um, the big pliers for removing lures because I was bank fishing at this time. Get the scales ready. Get the tape measure if you're going to measure them ready so that when that fish is out of the water, you can be as quick as possible and get them back into the water. So it's all stuff that the Pike Anglers Club have been preaching and preaching and coaching and practicing for 35 years. And don't keep the fish out of water for too long. They just don't like it. They're not supposed to be out of water. And this is all about coaching, teaching, protecting, and wanting to protect your fish.
There's one just going back. Healthy. In it might be a bit stressed out, but in very good condition and ready to grow bigger and get caught again. The list goes on and on and on, but hopefully that's made a point of what the Pike Anglers Club has done in the UK. The result is a high percentage of pike anglers are now following the PAC's code of practice, which has had a massive impact on the welfare of our stocks. Of course, things do go wrong, and there's always a new challenge to be tackled, but we're seeing big pike getting, because some of the big pike that we saw earlier from Chew Valley Lake, they get caught regularly. Now you can imagine how many happy pike anglers are there when they've caught some of those fish, you know, over a two or three year period maybe. And the reason why they're getting caught more and more is because they're being handled properly and with care and they're surviving the ordeal of getting caught. Now, I suspect some of what I've been saying on the fishing side of things may have gone over one or two people's heads. I hope not. But the objective of today is to understand exactly what has to be achieved to make Finland an attractive proposition to tourists, angling tourists. I felt that I've, I've needed to explain how it is, what experience we've had in the UK, and most importantly, what I think needs to be done here to achieve the goal. So I'll finish off with a summary. Utopia would be to eradicate the rules that states any pike can be killed, promote catch and release on all of your waters, this will take time I'm sure, educate pike fishing guides because the pike fishing guides are at the forefront of pike fishing in Finland. And if they can follow a code of practice, then that's a great start. Because they'll be teaching the youngsters, they'll be teaching people in this country, they'll be teaching visitors to this country the right way to do it. And that is really, really important. Promote the right code of practice to all pike anglers. You know, safe handling and some of the stuff that I've just shown. The Pike Anglers Club of Great Britain will help you guys. You've got a template there that can be taken and you can run with it. Please, please ban the use of boga lip grips. I don't know how much, I suspect there are quite a few of these used and they are horrendous some of the damage that gets caused and people that use them will tell you that oh, they don't damage the fish they don't damage the fish but they do anything that has got two claws gripping a piece of flesh and let's face it the mouth is the most important part of a pike's body because it has to function properly to eat and these guys that are using boga grips are damaging the soft tissues around the mouth and it is not necessary How's that poor fish going to catch bait and, and survive and grow big? No chance. And, and if you can get it all together, if you can promote, if you, if you can get these things in place and you can get big pike, I'll be back like a flash every single year, pike fishing your waters. So thank you. And good luck. And one, one question. You, you say about this, this monster bites over 30 pounds. I have caught within the past 15 years four of them. So how often is, is that the bite hangers in the UK catch one? Well, that varies tremendously. I mean, if you talk to Neville, He's caught 16, 16 30 pounds pike. Now he's very old. <laughs> he's a, no. But, but the but the, kind of the regular pike angler. They're not. They're, they're, whatever I've told you about the UK, 30 pound pike are still rare. We get quite well, a lot of 20 pounders. 
we get a fair amount of 25 pounders. You know, they're, they're not uncommon. 30 pounders are pretty rare, but we've got certain waters, Chew Valley Lake, for example. Chew Valley Lake, on a good day, might produce, well, one day that Neville and I fished Chew Valley Lake, it did 1130s. Not to us, but 1130s, and that's 25 boats. So that's the exception, and that, that really is the exception. But I've caught, Neville's caught 16 in his lifetime, I've caught eight. So they're not, they're not commonplace, um, but they are around. Thank you. And, and how, how many bites do you catch if, when, or, or normally when you go fishing? How many, how many bites? Well, we don't catch as many as you catch on the archipelago here, for sure. You know, I, I, yeah, Neville's probably right there. If we go for, and we do a lot of dead baiting in the UK. Um, we, we've got lure angling fanatics that just lure fish and we've got probably a high percentage do bait fishing, dead bait fishing. Um, and if you have three in a day, that's not bad. Some days you'll have five or six and it's a great day. But we don't have the kind of catches that you have out here where you can catch 20, 30, 50, you know. So, so yeah. If you yes. promote your catch and release as a good thing, you're just yes. promoting it, and it is a good thing. And how do you see it? Because you're fishing, you're not allowed to fish with live baits here. In the UK? Yeah. How do you think the ethical thing is going on, like in Germany, Switzerland? Do you with, think it's going to reach? What, the banning of live baiting? Yeah, because we are um, promoting the catch and release thing. We're just playing with the fish. How do you think that is going? Well, in the, in the UK, it's not totally banned. You can catch fish in that particular water and use them as live baits. Um, so, yes, we can live bait from time to time. I, I, I don't personally live bait very often unless I can get hold of I buy trout from a trout fishery where they've been bred. Um, the difference that we have to what you have here is your waters are rammed with silverfish. You have roach that we would dream for. And you have silver bream that we were catching one every year. The floats, it, the, your waters are full of food fish, as are not. We have been, um, over the, over, for a good number of years now, we've had the cormorants, the big seabirds, the black seabirds coming in because basically we've emptied the seas. And they now come inland and they are raping our lakes and rivers. They are emptying them of silver fish. So we, 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 we're more protective of our roach and our bream than you guys are. I more thought about Germany as they ban catch and release in some of the <coughs> states in Germany. And they ban catch and release in Switzerland. For what? For the pike? No, for, for the, the ethical stuff. The ethical thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I... Do you think it's going to reach the other part of Europe? I, I, I think it... I think it could, it could well do, you know, because I've got to be really careful here because we don't want to have it banned because it is a way of fishing. But the ethical side of it, me personally, I'm not keen on it because I don't like putting a roach on hooks, but I do do it occasionally if, I, if I've got the opportunity. Um, I mean, I was fishing, we've been fishing with Marcus for the last few days on, on the river and on it. And I, I don't think I used a live bait, did I, Marcus? Did I use a live bait? I, so there is an ethical side of it, and it's a very, very difficult debate. And yes, I do think it will spread, and I think it will come a point where a lot of the countries will not allow it. Yeah. So here in Finland, obviously, we have commercial fishing of pike. Um, so we have a different situation, probably, from you don't have commercial fishing of pike? Um, no, we have had instances of commercial fishing for other fish, but not, not so much pike, no. So it, it, is, it is different. It's difficult to reach your... Obviously the information about the, the best catch and release practice and all that, that, is, that we can do that, but banning uh, fishing of pike... Sure. Be, and obviously... We, we would aim to have sustainable fishing of pike, commercial fishing of pike. 
if I'm if sorry if I'm if I'm totally honest I think that you've got to do this in stages there's no magic wand and you're not going to convince everybody overnight that all of a sudden you know everything's rosy and you can just leave the pike but if you can get some isolated areas or regions or districts whatever you call it here and you can do a trial and prove that there is an opportunity there for better pike fishing and therefore better revenue and income then I think that would be a good way to start and then obviously preach catch and release and and take it from there but it won't happen overnight. Yeah, no. Thank you very much. Thank you.